Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. <clears throat> under Committee Rule 9, we'll now question the witness under the five-minute rule. I ask members to keep your questions succinct so the witness has time to answer. I now recognize myself for five minutes of questioning. Mr. Secretary, you've been proudly volunteering the taxpayers to take on the student loan debt of largely wealthy college graduates. Do you believe that students who spend their time in college calling for the destruction of an ethnic or religious group or spend their time preventing students of particular ethnic or religious groups from walking around campus freely or spend their time occupying campus buildings deserve to have their education paid for by taxpayers? Couldn't hear you that, that well, but if you're making reference to the uh, student debt relief plan that we've done, um, I'm really proud of the work that we're doing to provide a lifeline for students who uh, chose to go to college and are living. Uh, well, I'm talking about the students who are being anti-Semitic and stopping Jewish students from being able to go to <coughs> class and threatening them. Do you want to have the taxpayers pay their loans off? I believe that students who are breaking the law and are uh, disrupting the educational environment uh, should be held to account. I believe it's important that all students have access to their higher education classes okay. and graduation. Well, and then will the you commit to ensuring that no student has harassed other students or prevented other students from going to class or broken laws receives any form of student loan forgiveness. We are committed to making sure that campuses are safe. I con condemn any form of hate or any violence on campus. Um, I've spoken to students and educators who have experienced that, and it's our responsibility. Well, we'd like you to follow through on those who do break the law and make sure they don't receive student loan forgiveness. Mr. Secretary, the COO at FSA needs to have a deep and vast knowledge of how loan operations work, given FSA is de facto the largest consumer bank in the country. Indeed, the performance-based organization statute contemplates high expectations of the COO. The COO needs to be an operational and lending expert and have a keen understanding of massive lending operations. Will you commit to finding a replacement for Richard Cordray, who has real-world experience leading a massive lending operation so that we can be assured that the financial interests of the taxpayers are protected? Um, thank you for the question. I am committed to making sure we have a chief operating officer that has experience, and I look forward to working with you on, on a process to select. Thank you. In a similar vein, since September 19, 2023, I've been asking for the performance bonus for FY22 of COO Cordray and FY23 for senior FSA staff, including COO Cordray. This has been met with delay after delay after delay. This should not be hard, as these bonuses are required to be made public. If I do not receive the information requested by noon on the 14th, you will be facing a subpoena. As I mentioned earlier, FSA is a performance-based organization and has the ability to award bonuses to select employees, including the chief operating officer. Did the errors that KPMG found in 20, FY 2022 and FY 2023 in conducting the department's financial audits result in a reduction or elimination of bonuses paid to senior department and FSA staff? Thank you for the question. Simple an question, answer, yes or no. Thank you for the question, Chair, Chairman Fox. We take uh, responding to your request very seriously and we'll continue to share information with you. I'll make sure that uh, we're communicating with your team on a timeline for uh, providing you the information. Did the audit have an impact on the bonuses? Yes or no? Uh, within the communication, I would make sure that the answer to your question is there. Uh, I can tell you that we take uh, you know, the, the audit information that we receive very seriously. Okay. And what are the practical consequences of the department's failure to obtain a clean audit for each <clears throat> of the last two years? Well, uh, you know, we recognize how important it is to work with our auditors, and we've gotten disclaimers of opinions uh, in the past, and we're continuing to work with our auditors to make sure 
that the information they provide us is used as we continue to improve practices every year. Okay. On March 16th, on March 6th, I transmitted a letter to you voicing my concerns of the, about the department's 16% occupancy rate. It's been two months since I wrote to you about, and three and a half months since the White House Chief of Staff requested you and other federal department leaders submit a return to office action plan. Will you commit to me today you'll provide the information and documents that I requested no later than May 17th? I absolutely commit to providing you that information as quickly as possible. I, I hope it, before uh, May 17th. And I know that the, in, we've increased those numbers significantly, so um, I'm proud of the progress we're making. Thank, thank, you. You, thank you, Mr. Secretary. I, I now recognize Mr. Courtney for five minutes. Thank you, <coughs> thank you uh, Madam Chairwoman and, and uh, 